Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's weekly webinar series. My name is Molly Keck, and I'm an entomologist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service in Bear County. Today, we're going to be talking about citrus and what could be eating those citrus plants. I hope you got a chance to tune in and listen to David Rodriguez, our wonderful horticulturalist webinar on how to grow citrus, patio citrus, and citrus in the landscape. But let's say that now that you've gotten that citrus put in the ground, or maybe you already have some citrus that's in the ground, you're noticing that there's sometimes some little bugs on those plants. So we'll talk about what those insects are that are most common on our citrus plants, and which ones you actually want to and feel the need to do something about. So citrus problems can show up in all, pretty much all over the plant. The only part of the plant that usually doesn't succumb to some sort of a pest issue is down in the root system. But basically pests can damage your citrus on the stems, on the leaves, and on the fruit. When they're on the stem and on the leaf, it usually decreases the vigor of the, of the plant overall, and then it doesn't produce as good of a fruit yield for you. So you do want to be concerned when you have major issues on the stems and on the leaves. Leaves, I would say, maybe even more so than on the stems. But when the majority of the plant is covered up by an insect, something is not happy about that plant and you want to try to do something about it. It's also important to note that younger plants are always the most susceptible to insect issues, whereas your established plants in the landscape that have been there for a long time, they're relatively good size, these guys rarely have major pest issues. They can have a high load of insects on those plants, but they never really show um, a decrease in yield. Their vigor is still very much there. So it's your young, tender plants that you want to be the most concerned about. And once you can get those established, really baby them those first few years. But once they're well established in the landscape or in that pot, then you can kind of cut back on being really diligent on looking and seeing what insects are causing issues. So if an insect is chewing on the leaves of your plant, this is kind of the typical damage that you would see. You see holes in the plant, you see chunks of the plant taken out. Generally, it's around the margins of the plant. And the less leaf tissue there is, then of course there's less area for photosynthesis. The plant is putting a lot of energy into replacing those leaves if it can. And when it puts a lot of energy into replacing leaves, those are young, tender, very juicy leaves for those insects to feed on. They're going to move right over and feed on that young growth. A really common um, caterpillar that we find specifically on citrus is um, the giant swallowtail butterfly. And their caterpillar looks like bird droppings. And it's a defense mechanism so that obviously nothing wants to touch it or mess with it. When you do touch them and mess with them, you can see that they have a little oscillarium, those two kind of antenna looking body parts that push out of the head and they'll startle you. And so if you were a um, lizard or a bird, you would probably uh, move away wondering what the heck is going on. If you're a human, you think the exact same thing. But the giant swallowtail is a really pretty swallowtail. The underside of the wings are kind of almost all um, uh, uh, yellow, so it's almost like a, an inverted version of what you see on the top part of the wings. Um, I think that they're a very beautiful butterfly. They are specific to citrus plants. So if you grow citrus, you're probably going to encounter these. If you enjoy having pollinators and butterflies in your landscape, then you're not going to want to do much about this because you're going to kill off the baby version of what will become that beautiful adult. Very, very rarely is it needed that you actually do have to control for these caterpillars. They rarely are in high enough numbers that you see significant damage to the leaves. Um, in my experience, I've seen one or two on a patio plant. Uh, usually it's just one. Um, and you don't even notice that there's a decrease in, in leaf tissue. Um, so if you have them, I would hold off until it really looks like the plant is in distress um, before I really went and got something to try to kill these guys. Some of the less common chewing insects, um, and I don't, I guess less common is not, it's kind of misleading. These are definitely common on citrus. They're just not as, um, they're not usually a, an, an insect issue, um, or usually a major issue for citrus plants. Usually it's the sucking insects that cause most of the problems on our citrus plants. But every now and then you might have grasshoppers that come in and take over. Um, grasshoppers like citrus, they really like fruit plants. Um, they really prefer areas where 
there's a lot of kind of pasture land, untilled soil. And so if you live next to a more natural area, or maybe you live on several acres and, and around your house are your citrus plants, but you really don't do much about the land that's past that, then you're probably always going to have an issue with grasshoppers. If you live next to some farmland, you're probably always going to have an issue with grasshoppers. They just cause big giant holes um, or tissue pieces being taken out of the plant, and they can feed pretty, pretty voraciously. Um, the brown snail, brown garden snail, is another one that can sometimes be a problem. Maybe not necessarily as common on house uh, citrus, like backyard and patio citrus, but if you have a lot of them, then they have a high host range to choose from, and so they're going to become maybe a bit of an issue for you. And then sometimes these earwigs, the um, European earwig, can cause some damage. And usually it's the nymphs that are causing this damage. The adults are actually probably feeding on other insects for you, but the nymphs will start to feed on the leaf tissue. And they're very small, so they're taking tiny pieces of the leaf tissue out, and it's causing kind of holes, but also a deformed wilting look to the leaves. Um, that indicates that that's what you've got going on. This is just a kind of very general slide for you so that you can just take a picture or memorize it or write it down really quick and know in general what you can purchase for controlling chewing insects on your um, citrus. Many of these products, you're very limited to what you can use unless you are some sort of a, a unless you're a grower and then you have a, a wider variety of, of items to choose from. Because for the most part in backyard citrus situations, insects rarely become a major, major issue. But if you've got caterpillars of any type, that orange dog or any other caterpillar that you think is feeding on your plants, BT is a really great option that is specific to just caterpillars. It, they eat it, gives them an upset stomach, um, and then they never recover from that upset stomach. So BT is good if the caterpillars are actively feeding. BT is host-specific just to caterpillars. You're not going to hurt anybody else. Spinosad is another organic option. BT is organic. Um, Spinosad is an organic option, and it has the ability, um, especially on citrus, to kind of penetrate the foliage and become a systemic. So um, that's a really good thing to remember as we talk about our sucking insects, that Spinosad can be a good option if you can't constantly go out there and treat for them. And then Malathion has a little bit longer residual. It's certainly not organic, but it's an option for you if you really want to knock these guys down very quickly. If you've got an issue with grasshoppers, again, malathion is a good issue, but also till the soil and control the weeds if you can. If you can reduce that area where they like to hang out, lay eggs, then you're going to reduce the population coming into your citrus plants. If you're dealing with snails and slugs, you can hand pick them off. Carbaryl in a, in a liquid form um, can be effective against them as well. But, but really and truly hand picking is best and then also reducing the excess moisture in the soil around that plant so they're not attracted to that really nice moist area. And earwigs rarely become a problem unless you are a commercial grower, but if they are a problem and you find that you have an issue with them, um, beta cyfluthrin. And earwigs are rarely a problem for a backyard grower, but you find them mainly in commercial settings. If you do find that they are an issue for you, Beta cyfluthrin, which is a synthetic pyrethroid, is one option, and the carbaryl products. Um, carbaryl is generally seven products. That's another one that will control the earwigs. So um, in addition to chewing insects, we mainly see problems with sucking insects on our citrus plants. There's a lot of juices flowing through these plants, and so that's what they really love to feed on. And unfortunately, our sap-sucking insects have the ability to reproduce very quickly and build up in gigantic numbers very fast. On our younger plants, these become a bigger problem. For our more established plants, as with all pests, they can usually overcome the issues that they cause. One of the things that they'll do, other than just taking all of the vigor out of the plant by feeding on it, is that they will produce honeydew. Um, and honeydew will turn into sooty mold, and that can inhibit some photosynthesis. Generally, it's just aesthetic, um, but sometimes it can be thick enough and on enough of the leaves that it can cause a problem. But then high, high populations can prevent those plants from blooming because the plant is putting a bunch of energy and is just at a suppressed stress level that it can't put any energy into making the blooms. Um, the damage that sucking insects do, like aphids, they can, they're usually on the leaves, but they'll also, you can see in that top picture, are on the stem. 
and they cause kind of a wilted, deformed look to the leaf. The wilted and deformed look doesn't necessarily hurt the plant, but it is an indication that you've got an aphid problem, right? Um, and when you have aphids loaded up, like you can see in that picture where they're just solid on that stem, that's not gonna be healthy for that plant at all. Mealybugs and scales are another issue that happens on citrus. And they're another one like aphids where they just go from maybe a couple to exploding in population very quickly. They again reduce the tree vigor and of course the yield of the um, citrus and they promote sooty growth, which can, um, or sooty mold growth, which can inhibit photosynthesis. But the other thing that they do and aphids will do the same thing is because they produce honeydew, which is what they're uh, essentially, um, they're excreting out of themselves, their urine, um, or they're sucking all this juice. And so they're peeing this and pooping this juice out. It's very sweet. And so it attracts, um, they will attract ants that will feed on their honeydew. And those ants can interfere with the biological control of other things. They don't want to compete with these ants. And so pest populations get high. So when people ask, is it bad to have ants on my plants? Um, it kind of is because it, secondarily they can cause, they can kind of just disrupt the balance of the way that things should be. And then those dreaded leaf footed bugs, we deal with these guys on our vegetable plants, sometimes on some cactus. Um, and if you grow veggies, you really are not a big fan of leaf footed bugs, but they can also actually be an issue on your citrus as well. These guys are most prevalent when they're next to a preferred host plant and they like vegetables. So if you have a tomato garden right next to your citrus, you're going to deal with leaf-footed bugs, but they also really prefer um, to lay their eggs and find rest on weeds. And so if you can reduce the weed issue, then you can help reduce the leaf-footed bug issue. Reducing weeds is twofold. If you have a grasshopper issue, you probably have a leaf-footed bug issue um, or some sort of a stink bug issue. So control the weeds. That's an indication that you have way too many weeds close by and you're harboring these things in the adult form, allowing them to reproduce, make a lot of babies, and they come and cause damage. On the outside of the fruit, they, you don't really see any, any damage, but what they will do is rot and ruin the inside of the fruit, the integrity of the fruit, and so it's not edible to you. Um, so controlling these guys, control the weeds, and remove alternative hosts. And I mentioned this product here, a, a synthetic pyrethroid like cyfluthrin um, that's misspelled. It should be C-Y-F-L-U-T-H-R-I-N because um, other, the other insects that we talked about are generally controlled by one of four things. Your options, your main options when you go to the nursery um, are to find products that have spinosad as an active ingredient, oils, soaps, or malathion. And when I say these are your main options at the nursery, these are the options that if you look on the label can be used on edible crops or fruit producing trees. You have to be very careful. A tree is not just a tree, right? You're producing food from this tree. And so you cannot use the same products that you would use on your oak trees or your mountain laurels as you would on your citrus trees. Make sure that you're purchasing the right product for the type of plant that you have. Otherwise, even if it's even like pecan trees, we you will find on the label, if you use the wrong product, you usually cannot consume those pecans for two seasons. It would be a shame not to be able to pull any of your lemons or grapefruit or limes off of your tree if you use the wrong product for up to two years. That's a long time to wait for lemonade. One major, major problem that we find um, in the citrus industry is an insect called the Asian citrus psyllid. And the Asian citrus psyllid causes a disease called citrus greening. The insect itself is not necessarily damaging, but what it vectors and transmits is very damaging. And this is something that in your backyard, if you lose a citrus tree, it's not devastating. But if you're a citrus grower, you can absolutely lose your entire crop and it will take you years to replace what you've lost. So this disease is very significant to the citrus industry, and we have found that if we can try to control the psyllid in backyard situations, we can help prevent major infestations in uh, commercial settings. So I say this if you live in an area that's next to a lot of, of citrus growers. So if you live down in the valley, you want to take care of your backyard citrus plants because you don't want to in turn build up these populations and allow them to kind of be bombs that attack um, your, your neighboring citrus growers. 
So when these guys are resting, you can see they kind of hold their rear ends up into the air. Um, they almost will look like thorns as they're kind of lined up on the, the stem of the plant. And for controlling them, just do something is, is the point. So do whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever products you can use. Um, as far as organic options, oils can work against these guys. Use the proper oil for the time of year. So you don't want to use, um, uh, you want to talk to your nurseryman and you want to read the back of your label and make sure that you're using the proper oil and you're not using summer oils in the winter and winter oils in the summer, right? Um, synthetic pyrethroids can be effective against them. Cyfluthrin type products or a mix of like beta cyfluthrin, um, lambda cyfluthrin, those are all um, options that you might see as far as active ingredients. Carbaryl in the form of seven um, products is also another option. You could probably try spinosad as well, um, but uh, tins that oils work a little bit better because it coats them, but what it really does is it coats the babies, and so the, the, the next generation coming up um, is not able to become the next generation. Here's some of those uh, uh, symptoms that you might see from citrus screening. Um, you might have lopsided, um, bitter fruit. This fruit looks fine kind of as far as the rind goes, but you might have um, really, really thick rind and just very little fruit on the inside, uh, very little pulp on the inside. They, the seeds might be aborted. The discoloration is another thing that you might see on the outside. Um, the fruit remains green even when it's ripe, so lemons never really turn yellow. They always stay green. Then on the leaves, you kind of get this asymmetrical blotchy look to the leaves. It's very different from nutritional deficiencies, um, which are more symmetric on either side. Insect damage looks uneven, right? Um, and citrus greening symptoms look uneven as well. On the plant, you might have yellow shoots and then you get some dieback on the plants. You can see the yellow portion right there. Um, it becomes stunted, it's, then it starts to lose its leaves and then the blooms start to fall off. Or it might bloom in a time of year when it's not supposed to bloom because it's just trying to, it's got a little bit of energy, it's trying to do whatever it can to produce fruit. Um, so very weird um, symptoms. And for the most part, if you're a grower, the recommendation is pull those and call those plants because they inevitably will die. Um, to my knowledge, there's not any remedy for controlling the disease, but the, there is a remedy to try to kill what causes the disease. Another guy that you might see on your citrus trees, and, and this guy is very, very common, is a glassy sharpshooter. Sharpshooters are kind of shaped like a um, bullseye, or not a bullseye, but kind of like an arrow type of a shape to them. Um, they have a very, very characteristic look. Almost looks like a, a weird frog, a little bit in the eyeballs. Um, but they you, they don't pop their bodies up like a like a um, psyllid does. They lay kind of flat up against the stem, and they're very fast. They move very quickly, and, and you try to grab one, and they just keep going around and around and around um, on that stem. So what they will do is if the numbers are high enough, they will reduce fruit quality, but it is not uncommon to see one, two, ten of these guys on a backyard patio citrus. They're really more of a grape pest. So if you are in an area that has wild grapes or you know that you have a vineyard close by to you, you are probably going to deal with these more often than someone who does not have anything around them in, their, in that backyard. Um, for controlling these guys, your options are, are imidacloprid and pyrethrins um, or some synthetic pyrethroids. But for the most part, these things are not really managed in a backyard situation. It's mainly if you are a commercial grower. So consider how your plant is doing. Just because you find one or two on there does not warrant you running to the store and buying something to try to kill these guys. Another one that can cause damage on a citrus, but doesn't necessarily mean that the plant is, is hurting, is the citrus leaf miner. It's a little moth. Um, a miner is a... Um, a leaf miner is just kind of a generic term for any insect that lays its eggs between the plant tissue and it burrows and mines its way through there. So they feed on the inside of the plant tissue. Aesthetically, it's not very good to look at, but it doesn't hurt the overall vigor or health of the tree. It's just not pretty. If you don't like it, cut off those leaves. But the leaves are still photosynthesizing and doing what they should do. Um, even if you're a grower, there are really no options for you to try to control them. So, um, in a backyard situation, just kind of live with them. 
There are some monitoring techniques. You can buy pheromone traps and trap them, and that's when you know that they're around. You can maybe cover up the plant. But honestly, for your backyard, it's it's not worth the extra effort and the cost of purchasing those, those pheromone traps. So once again, just to kind of reiterate to you the options that you generally have as a backyard grower, spinosad is one option, oils are another one, insecticidal soaps are another option that you often have, and then you've got malathion also. The oils, spinosad, and, and um, insecticidal soaps, of course, are organic, right? Um, they're a little bit more um, lower, lo lower residual, meaning that especially with oils and soaps, if you don't actually touch that insect, you're not going to do anything to that insect. Um, but they also don't persist in the environment for a, a really long time. So if you have an issue with aphids, mealybugs, and scales, I would recommend treating several times with these products before you finally decide, I think I've got them under control. If you treat one time, you often find that you will actually promote them to increase in reproduction and you will have more than what you started with. There are also some insects or some non-insect issues that happen with citrus that I just wanted to touch on very quickly. And one of those is bird damage. And it's mainly from these great tailed grackles that we have um, throughout Texas. Um, they will peck at the, at the, um, the fruit. And sometimes it can look like hail damage. Hail can also damage citrus plants also. Um, when they get through that rind and they cause that rotting, of course, that plant is not useful. But in your backyard, <clears throat> if they are not really hurting and getting to the core of your plant, of your fruit, then you're probably going to be fine consuming those citrus. Um, but it's when they get really damaging is when they cause a lot of problems. There have been a lot of research that's been done on, on methods to try to reduce grackle damage. Um, a lot of these a lot of these research projects have happened down in the valley um, of Texas to try to figure out how they can help salvage some of the citrus. And basically nothing really prevents the issue. What they did find was that the Cannon method was the most successful. Um, if your plant is a patio citrus and relatively small, then you could certainly cover the plant to keep the birds off of it. Move the plant into an area and put up things that distract or discourage birds from coming in. Um, so you probably have a much better chance of repelling the birds from, from coming after your plants than in, in your backyard situation than you would if you were a grower because you have acres and acres, rows and rows of, of citrus, and there's, it's impossible to cover every single plant. So basically, you're just trying to dissuade the birds from coming to the plant in whatever way you can. Sunburn is another thing that sometimes gets blamed. Um, insects get blamed for that damage. And this just happens in areas on the plant. It can happen to the leaf or it can also happen to the fruit that are not shaded. And generally, it's where it faces south and it faces west. And so, of course, it's going to happen most of the time when it's um, usually on warmer days when it's super duper sunny. And what happens is it gets kind of brown and leathery when you touch it. Um, it's just it was sunburned. And what you do about that is try to give it some shade. I mean, there's not a whole lot that you can do. Uh, my understanding that is it's just aesthetics. It's not actually hurting the inside of the fruit, but an insect did not feed on it or cause that damage. And you can see in that picture, sometimes it is, even causes some darker spotting to it, which might make you think something's pecking or feeding at it. But in this case, it's just sunburn. So just a word about your pollinators. Um, you definitely want to allow your pollinators to pollinate your citrus plants. Otherwise, you're probably not going to get much citrus from it. And if you've ever smelled a citrus bloom, it is the most fragrant, beautiful smell that you've ever smelled. And pollinators are completely attracted to it. So be smart about when you apply pesticides. Even if you're using soaps, even if you're using oils, if it touches a bee or other pollinator, it's going to kill those guys. Insecticides kill insects. It doesn't matter if it's organic or not. Organic does not necessarily mean safer for human health, and it does not necessarily mean safer for your pollinators or your non-target insects. It just means safer for the environment, less persistent in the environment. So don't apply pesticides when pollinators are present. I know it sounds like common sense, but try to abide by that common sense. Don't apply pesticides when pollinators are present. Only apply in the evening when the pollinators have all gone to bed, so they're not encountering that pesticide. Um, hopefully by that time, it will have dried on the leaves. Um, try to avoid spraying directly on the flowers. Try to apply 
apply just to leaves and to stems where they're damaging um, the plant. And then also try to avoid pesticides during the bloom time if you possibly can. Wait until it's already been pollinated because you got to have that pollinator to make what you want out of that citrus. I hope you guys enjoyed our weekly webinar series this week on citrus pests. Make sure that you check out all of our recorded webinars at our uh, YouTube channel, My Extension 210. You can find this webinar recorded, but you can also find David Rodriguez, our horticulturalist, who spoke about backyard and landscape citrus, how to grow them and how to maintain them. Um, and if you're worried about insect pests, you probably should also be worried about maintenance. So make sure you check that out so you can learn everything you can about making a happy and healthy tree. As I mentioned, if your citrus is established and happy and healthy, then it's not going to have a lot of insect issues to it. So maintenance is very, very key in pest control. I also encourage you that if you ever have insect issues that you um, shoot me an email, you can send me pictures and I'll be happy to take a look at those to try to help you figure out what's bugging you in your landscape.